In this video, we are going to continue with our module number one, whereby we are going to discuss on HTML formatting text. And later on, we are going to see how to structure our pages using some of the HTML tags. So let's quickly get into the outline of this page. We see what we'll cover. But before that, welcome to the Talking Dev. Here is what we are going to cover. Number one, we are going to cover anatomy of HTML element. And number two, we are going to see two types of HTML tags or element. And then we are going to see on the third one, adding HTML comments. And then we'll follow along on the fourth one on formatting heading, that is heading one or the way to heading number six. On the fifth one, we are going to look at formatting paragraphs with using the p tags. And then on the sixth one, we are going to have a quick peek at debugging HTML. Today, we are going to use Google Chrome. And then the last one, that is the seventh one, we are going to see on how to add context to, to headings and paragraph tags using tags like em, strong, uh, bold, italics, superscript, subscript, small, and span. Okay, with that, let's get into the content and see how we format elements. Quickly, let's get into our HTML tags anatomy. And in what you'll notice here, we have a small slide that I have with draw.io here. It's a free tool, I love it. It's one of the best. So what I have, I've, I've designed a small thing here. We have HTML tags anatomy. And number one here, we have the normal tags. So here is how we have a normal, tag, a normal tag. In fact, we have a left arrow. That is when we open a tag, we have a left arrow, and then we close it with a right arrow. And whatever the tag that we want to put inside here, we put in between these arrows. And then we have the closing tag here, whereby we have a forward slash before or after uh, the first left arrow bracket here. And then here in between, the, we have an opening here whereby I've left it open. But as you can see under the paragraph tag here, we have the text element or the text contact here. Usually in HTML, we call them as nodes. So here we have a text node. This is my profile page. So this is what we call normal tags when you come to HTML. But we also have what we call safe closing tags. Now, safe closing tags, um, sometimes they can be confusing because mostly they will not have content in between them. For here, for, for instance, we have um, a breaking tag or what we usually call a horizontal room. Uh, that is HR tag and BR, but we also have an image tag that usually, if you look at image tag, uh, some of them are written with content empty. That is where we put an, a content that is nothing, but in modern HTML5, you'll, use, you'll see us using uh, image tag, a self-closing tag like this one, and then you see attribute describing what the image tag will hold. We'll see more into that when we, we reach at that section of, of this coursework. Now, what we'll have, we have is that in HTML5 and HTML4, we usually have somehow a different kind of syntax and you may come across the, this one. So instead, when we look at the one we have on the right side here, that is HTML 4.1 or slash JSX, you can see we have a forward slash at the end. So we have uh, this some some syntax you'll see uh, in when it comes to uh, formatting HTML with this self closing tag. Let me quickly show you how J JSX because JSX is a is a syntax that can be confusing if you are new uh, to HTML and you can come across it and think like JavaScript usually is using HTML, but typically it's the, just a way that they have a syntax they transpire it looking like. Let, let me just say that. Usually JSX make writing H, uh, J JavaScript easy in React because we use call like that use look like HTML, but behind the scene that is JavaScript. So what I've done, I've linked a page here on JSX 
and it's talking more about JSX and how it looks like. You can see a tag like H1 here. We also have a H2 and a div element there. But this is all in another realm that I would not want to get into this video. With that, uh, let's quickly look into documentation a little bit. I wanted to show you something about uh, content categories because this is a very important page when it comes to learning HTML. And the reason why it is so important, I'm going to show you this diagram here. We have different type of element group into different categories. We have the flow element, the heading, the section, in phrase, embedded, interaction, and then metadata. So far we've seen metadata, and then we see the flow elements of, that we discussed have actually introduced something about a paragraph. Then we have embedded uh, element, I've mentioned something to do with images. Then we have uh, phrasing, and then interactive, then heading, we also see it in this particular video. Then we'll have sectioning, uh, which I sometimes I usually call them layout. So this page is wrong. They are, they ha they've actually listed all the HTML5 tags in this page. So you can go through, have a look at them, and also dive deeper. The best part is that they have this tutorial at the uh, at the left edge here, or the left, left uh, menu here. You can go and look and see what exactly you can be able to understand further, or you can supplement with the content that I'm teaching here. So let's quickly go back to the to VS Code and start coding because I know that's what is most interesting when it comes to this video. So quickly to the VS Code. Now I have an empty page here. I've already created a module number one folder. And then we have uh, zero one of this section. We call it formatting text. So quickly what I will do, I will use shortcut. We have via just by emit. We usually like exclamation mark. And then you click enter and then Emit will do its work and provide this page. So what I will quickly do is remove this one because this meta tag is no longer needed. So let me walk you through. The first thing that we have here, we have the doc type, which is type HTML. We saw how, why we use that one because these are HTML5 document and the way HTML5 does, that's how we write it. Then we have our root uh, tag here that is HTML and it has a language EN, that is the attribute language EN. And then we have the head tag following there, and then the body tag, which is this next to head. So the head and the body tag are next, they are direct children of HTML tag. So let me quickly do like this so that you can be able to see what exactly we have there. Then we have the meta tag here, which number one, we have the one that tells the, uh, the browsers to treat this page as a UTF-8. I won't go into detail what that is, but it's something to do with how this page is, a con is a coded. Then we have the meta tag there that talk about the viewport. Technically, this is about the scaling and how different devices treat will treat this page. The way we do here, it's like resetting this page such that whenever we use different type of devices, for instance, when we are working with Apple devices uh, like Mac, and iPhones, and then we have normal devices like this one that we uh, I'm using that HP laptop. They usually sometimes come with a different type of view, view, viewports. And then we, because you want to treat your images uh, almost the same way, no matter what uh, the viewport that you are viewing, in terms of even zooming the content of your page, you want to use this meta tag. Now, the next one we saw uh, in the previous video that I introduced, uh, this markup and then this is the title. So let's quickly call this one introduction of the basics of HTML. Now we have the basic of HTML there and we are ready to go. So the first tag that we are going to look at today is the P tag. Here it is. As you can see, I'm using Emit and when I write P, it crosses. So let's call it, this is my page. And that is beautiful, but we need to see what we've done there. So let me quickly open my live server. So here I'm on U Windows, so I'm going to click Alt, L, Alt, O, simultaneously. That is one after the other. And then I'm hoping my live server is open. And here it is. This is my page, as you can see. This is my page, as you expect. Let me quickly zoom so that you can see it. Uh, my laptop is actually 
uh, zoom it way back and perhaps you may not see what exactly it is. So what I will do, I will quickly put this one next to, okay, let's do that. And then put my, what's my, my VS code there. Now I have VS code on one, on one side and then I have, uh, actually my VS code did not go to the third side. I will see in half of it. This is a nice feature on Windows. Good. Now we have VS Code on one side, and then we have my browser on the other side. So here it is. Now we can be able to compare them side by side. So here we have uh, my, that's how we write the paragraph tag. And then next one, let's do the heading tags because that's the one that we saw we'll do next. and type this is my profile page so that would be like your heading tag number one and then that's how we do it we write it i can see i i, ha I still had the problem when it comes to the live server i'm not so sure why it's bring giving me trouble but i will quickly stop it and try to restart it again I think there is something wrong with that plugin right now, but a few time back, uh, it was working fine. So that's how we write H1 tags. And then the next thing we can do is go through H1, H1 all the way to H6, that is H2 all the way to H6. And then we use emit here to help our fix. Um, write it faster. So we have uh, here one, let's do with that. And then we multiply here by, by, by four, by five actually. And then we do like that. And actually <laughs> what he has done, it has put this as a heading. So this should be like that. I don't know whether he image will get it, but let's put it as a content there. Yeah, that's fine. And then it will understand. Now what he has done, it has brought them to be H2, all of them. So I will quickly change the rest to the next H variation or the next heading variations. So let's do that. I'm using multicursor there and quickly selecting what we have and five and then we have fed in six so my live server still give me a problem i hope i'll be able to fix this later so let's continue okay and um So we have all my headings here. That is this my my profile page heading heading two, three, four, five, and six. So this is essentially how we write headings. But we have a section that I skipped, and it's because I wanted to show you when we have contact. So this is adding HTML uh, comments. So here we can add these. These are my headings. So if you can see what I've done, I've used like this magic. What I usually do is called control shift and then forward slash, and then it have all that. If you are, that is if you're on Windows, if you have a Mac, a Mac computer, kindly consult how that one works. But technically what you do is like you write this arrow and then you follow is this one, I think so. Left bracket, then that way and Image also close that one for you. And this is the paragraph. So that's how we do it when it comes to adding comments. So you will see a lot of comments in my content. Technically, we cannot see that one. This is something that we write it for ourselves as developers. This enable us to, to, to have something for us to see it later when we 
we are alone or maybe you are reviewing our code and you want to leave that comment to someone to see so as you can see on my screen here this comment does not show so that means that we go to the next part where i show you how to do debugging on chrome so uh, my chrome here does not have a debugging a shortcut if you ask us or the best do it i, I usually right click and click inspect and we have uh, these debugging tools for Chrome opening here on the side. So before we do anything, I'm trying to resize it, and it's like it's like it's giving me uh, this kind of headache. Okay, then it's done. It's like my life my life server the way it has collapsed on me. So what we do is that uh, quickly let's look at what we have in here. Okay, number one here we have our headings here. A header and then we have the doc type as you can see it's grayed out here the doc type more like it's not the part in fact this is the only tag that we like that way then we have the html root tag here with the language as it is in fact this is the mirror of what we have here let me just zoom out my text so that it can look a little bit uh fitting within the context and then we have the body and everything else we have remember this kind of uh comments that we, we we noted earlier this is how we write comment so here at the at the when we inspect our page we can see what we have now with this uh, a chrome tool it's rich with a lot of tools so we have different sections with console sources even network we can see our page our page is loading when we load that and mine because it has problem with live server uh perhaps I need to see how to fix that one. Now we have all other tools that we have, but that's an advanced section, which I will not cover in this video. But generally what we can do is that this is the debugging tools that we are going to use. So let's quickly go back to the next part whereby we will see how to add supporting element. In fact, I call it adding context to headings, tags, and P tags. And let's see, some of these because some of them are usually different and they call a different meaning because of the html5 and semantic meaning when it comes to uh, screen readers so first of the tag we'll see is m tag let's quickly have an m tag there then we have the corresponding one which is italic it's italicizing text and then we have a strong tag here we have a strong tag and then a corresponding tag that look the same when it comes to screen is the bold tag. Technically, when you look at these tags, they are usually called the four tags because these tags do not sit on themselves. What we usually do, we, we put them in between paragraph tags and other elements like heading so that they can have they can add context to those elements. So here is how we do it. We nest them within paragraphs and then let do the same. And that's how we do it. We next this text within paragraph. Technically, as you can see, uh, this one does not mean anything because uh, it will not display anything from our page. And you can see here on our page, there is nothing that is brand new. That means we need to add content. So let's add forum here, forum, forum four, because I'm using emit. Emit will help us write forum. And that's how we do it. And then we have forum. That's how we do it. And then let's do the same here with three. And then we have another forum here, three. And then it adds that. So let's add some content here so that you can be able to see the different when we have this content here okay i'm quickly i'm doing it as fast as i can do and trying to type them as fast okay this one has decided to add all the content i click alt z so that it can wrap and so we can see all the content oh this time live server have decided to do me a good favor here and show the content the way I wanted. Let's move this one somewhere between there and uh, this one somewhere between there. 
so that we can have a difference when it comes to our content. So here we have we have our page. As you can see, there is almost visually when it comes to em and italics italics tag they are almost look the same but when it comes to usage this they have different meaning as i saw because i told you earlier because they add different context so i had a page here that is something that i had researched earlier this is a page i will link and then they are talking why you should use em or italic italic size and Everything, when it comes to this one, everything has to do with semantics. And if you want to dive into details of how they work, you come into this page. Uh, technically, what they say is that when you come to this tag, it comes to your call, how you want to use them. So the next one that we are going to see here is uh, superscript and subscript. So we have P. And let me put program here. That's a sub. So Superscript and then program for all that text we want them to be sub superscript and then program six there and program four there and then we have p tag let's do sub subscript and then we put program six there and then we put surrounding text so that you can be able to see how this one fits together and row M6. So, okay, let's go to our page here and uh, still our, our, our live server is still giving me headache. And here we have, we have superscript here and subscript here. You can see the way it formats. And then let's quickly see how the, the small tag work. P, we nest small tag. And then we put, we put content of program 10 here. And then outside here, here, and then we add together. Put program 15 and then let's also do that. Program program 10 here so that we can see okay our our image did not capture that one, so let me quickly do that and see you can see what happened the small tag what it does it puts this into small text here compared to the rest so this one does its own thing sometimes when you want to put some small text within some context wherever the rest of the text has a, a big context like the one we are seeing here uh, we use a small tag so what we have seen here is that all these elements that is the paragraph small tag em strong tag italic and bold tag, all these, they are what we are calling formatting tag. In the next video, we are going to look a little bit on advanced topic, things like broad code. We look into that video and be able to extend the concept that we are seeing here. I hope by then I'll have fixed my live server and if it, has no, it, it will not be fixed, I know what to do. Until then, take care.